uh, Matter Moments, we're going to be joined uh, by MMA veteran, UFC veteran Evan Dunham. Been around the organization for quite some time. Made his UFC debut back at UFC 95, February of 2009. Won via knockout. Uh, he was 8-0 and at the time, and just recently he said goodbye to the sport. So it was an almost 10-year career inside the octagon. Fought a who's who, had some great moments inside and out. Wanted to check in with Evan Dunham and see what life will be like after the UFC. He joins us now on the phone. Evan, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Thank you very much for joining us. So uh, it's been a few weeks now since you said goodbye uh, you were in the cage against Francisco Trinaldo. You confirmed that you would be leaving. Now that you know the dust has settled a little bit, a couple weeks it has sunk in. What is life like after fighting so far? <laughs> it's good. Uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time just hanging out with his family. Um, you know, and just kind of doing the normal things you do after a fight. Uh, but you know, not much has changed as of right now. Uh, you know, got back to training and rolling at the gym and, uh, just spending lots of time with the family. So it's been really good so far. You're, you're at peace with this, with this decision? Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, at peace with it. You know, it's been, it's been a little while coming. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a calculated decision. It wasn't a spur of the moment. I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, but really happy with the decision. Ultimately, why did you decide to leave? Uh, you know, it was a number of things. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it, it's hard to it's hard to say just one individual reason, but you know, multiple reasons combined uh, it was kind of the driving factor. You know, I want to. Uh, I think it's really important um, to get out at a correct time in this sport. Um, you know, I kind of want to lead by example. For the, the next generation of guys coming up behind me, uh, and set the example of how to you know calculate what's going on in your career, give it a hundred percent, do your absolute best, but you know recognize when uh, when it's time to hang them up. That way, you know we have a lot of time left in our lives still, and we don't want our quality of life to suffer too much just for a short period of time. Uh, you know, pursuing what we love, um, you know, and and it, it's it's. It, it's a good time for me to get out. I've had a few nagging injuries for a while. Uh, Going to get all those taken care of. Um, but you know, it, at the end of the day, my passion is, has kind of shifted gears away from competing in the sport into more business aspect type stuff. Um, so you know, those are the main reasons for it. Uh, do you feel like overall, like long term, health wise, there won't be any lingering issues, uh, considering how long you fought in MMA? No, I, I think I think I'll be just fine. I think um, you know I'm choosing a good time to get out. Uh, my last three lo losses were all body shots, <laughs> so um, you know guys going into the fights with me, they, they know that you know they're hunting the body, and unfortunately my body's just not taking those shots anymore. I used to be able to shrug those off earlier in my career, but they seem to have much more of an effect on me now. Uh, but as far as the the head goes, uh, the head's really good, and that's that's mainly the 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 biggest issue you know the the body the shoulders the knees the, the back whatever it may be that all can, is stuff i can deal with but you know i want to have good conversations with my daughters when they get older and i think uh, getting out at the right time is, is important so i don't suffer long-term like head problems because of it you didn't want to talk really about the retirement leading up to the fight why is that uh, I just wanted to stay in the right mindset, you know. I didn't want to get to the situation where I'm thinking about what's coming up next or how it's going to feel to be, you know, participating in my last fight or walking out to the cage. I didn't want anything to change. Um, so I try to, honestly, I just try to ignore the whole fact, even to myself, building up to the fight. And before I announced it, you know, I had kind of written down and, and, you know, I had many conversations with myself, and uh, I got to a good place, and, and I knew that going into the fight, I was going to need to keep the same mentality I've always had in order to compete the best that I could. Uh, so that's really kind of why I, I skirted the question on the, the retirement, because I didn't want to put myself in a place I wasn't unfamiliar going into my last fight. Um, before the last fight, though, you, you did mention that uh, you were being asked to pay for an ambulance ride after UFC 216. You're fighting against yeah. Daniel Dariush. Um, why Why did you bring this up a year later, and what happened after you brought this up? Uh, so you know, I, I'm I'm a company man. I've always you know I've always been very you know 
whatever the company wants, I'll do. Um, but you know, the problem was is I had I had received uh, notices saying that I was going to be sent to collections for a while, and you know, I kept contacting the person I needed to contact, and it just really wasn't going anywhere. And then I kind of got a uh, a final warning letter, and then you know, I kind of gave the UFC. Um, you know, hey, I'm going to go to collections, and uh, so I got I got sent to collections, and uh, you know, so I had to, I kind of had to put them on blast there for a moment. You know, when bad behaviors, when spotlights put on bad behavior, the bad behavior usually stops. So that's what kind of my uh, my driving force behind that post was. Um, you know, I coming into retirement, there's a few things that I wanted to do uh, financially. I need to have good credit for that. And so the last thing I needed to do was get hit with a, uh, you know, a mark on my credit score because of a fight that I, you know, had years ago. And the reason I brought it up a year later is because I hadn't gotten sent collections to that point. It all got taken care of really quickly. Um, I think that maybe just the right people weren't notified of what was going on. And then when they were, they, they, they really quickly took care of it. So, you know, no hard feelings on my part. Uh, I'm all dialed in, so I'm happy with that. But yeah, that's that's what that was. It was just a matter of, you know, making sure that I was taken care of the way that I, you know, was supposed to be. So they paid for it in full. Oh yeah, they they t- they took care of it. They took care of it. I don't I don't know what the, the underlying cause was, but uh, you know, it was wasn't a situation where it was like I got hit with a, a notice and I put them on blast right away. It was it was a it was a while in the making, yeah. but. Like I said, as soon as the correct people knew about it, it got taken care of right away. So, must have been, you know, it must have been kind of annoying to get to the point where, as you call yourself a company man, for you to get to the point to actually say it to the world, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it was frustrating to say the least when I got a call from collection. So I was I was a little pissed off. <laughs> Has that ever happened before, well, where you were asked to pay for something that shouldn't be yours to pay? No, absolutely not. That's no, weird. No, and they, I've never been asked to pay for it. It was the collection company was trying to collect it from me. You know, they didn't, they didn't know what was going on, and uh, but it was it was just kind of it was weird that it even got to that point. So okay, um, and overall, your experience in the UFC, the nine years, any regrets? No regrets at all. No regrets at all. You know, I've absolutely loved every minute of it. I feel like I've always been taken care of. Um, by the UFC, um, you know, there were some 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 fights that, you know, didn't go my way that I, you know, obviously wish it would have. Um, and if I could change it, I would. But, you know, that's not reality. And so, you know, looking back over the nine years um, plus, you know, I, I'm extremely happy with what I've accomplished and, you know, what I was able to do and was able to compete with some of the best guys in the world, was able to compete against some guys that I looked up to going into the sport. So really, I, I I have no complaints at all. What's the one fight that you say that like you wish you would have done better? Is there one that sticks out that you think about a lot? Oh, uh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> you know, any fighter would tell you they're their own worst critic. So you know, there's really not a single fight that I can uh, I can look at and say, hey, I did everything right. You know, I wouldn't change anything about it. But. You know, all, all, all the close decisions I had, you know, you know, there's a lot of things I could look at and say, oh, well, we should have done that, we should have done that. But, you know, hiring tight 2020, so I really can't be disappointed with that. Do you have a favorite fight? Um, you know, honestly, it might be TJ Grant because it was, it was a wild fight, it was a bloody fight. Um, and it was kind of one of those fights that you can look back and just say that you kind of, you threw threw every game plan away and just bit down and let it go. And, and you know that's what I was kind of known for at the beginning of my career. But that was a lot of fun for me. I learned a lot about myself in that fight. So uh, I would probably say Grant was a good one. Um, you know, uh, Shirk was a good one. I learned a lot in that fight. You know, and, uh, but yeah, there's there's just there's quite a few. There's there's not one individual one that was my favorite by any means. It's interesting because bo- both those fights were losses. Um, and I, I think yeah. that says a lot about you. Also, it's also of note is that you you, you lost four or five. It, it began with the TJ fight, but then you rebounded with winning four, and then the draw against Benil Dariush. So it seemed like maybe in that losing streak, like oh, the beginning was coming, and then you went on this long winning streak. You turned it around, yeah, impressively. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I think part of that was due to uh, you know I. I 
I removed myself from the, the gym that I was training at and opened my own gym and just kind of really focused on myself during those times. Uh, you know, and that's a tough thing to do coming off of four losses, you know, uh, a lot of stress on you, obviously, there when you're fighting for your job. But, uh, you know, I was able to open my own gym, and I kind of put a lot of my mental energy into that, and I think it helped me uh, in fighting because I wasn't in a position where I eat, sleep, and breathe everything fighting. You know, it gave me an outlet to uh, put some of my energy elsewhere, but at the same time, it was energy that was kind of coming back you know, because it was still in jiu-jitsu, still working on, uh, you know, things that I can use in fighting. But I think that was a, a big turning point for me was opening the gym and you know, it let me it let me do other things besides just eat, sleep, train, and that's it. So what's the plan now? Life after fighting, how do you want to spend your days? How do you want to earn a living? Uh, you know, I, I've been working on my gym for, you know, about five years now, and the uh, gym's going really, really well. We just uh, moved to a little bit bigger facility, so I'm going to be putting a little bit more effort into the gym as well, um, but I'm also going to take up uh, doing some managing. I'm going to partner up with Ali, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that because I feel I have a lot of experience with having gone through kind of, I shouldn't say the beginning of the sport, but kind of the making of the more commercialized end of, um, you know, the UFC when they were getting big. And I, I've seen a lot of ups and downs uh, in fighters. I managed myself for seven years. And so I think there's a lot of knowledge there that I can use and I can help the next generation of fighters grow and, and really get the things that they're after. Um, so that's going to be part of it is getting into management. Wow. Okay. So you're going to be working with uh, Dominance MMA and you're going to have your own stable of fighters. Or you're just going to work with, you know, the stable that's already there. Uh, I, I plan on having my own stable, you know, my own group of guys uh, working with. And, uh, you know, it, I'm right at the beginning of this. Uh, you know, I've talked to a few people um, and this, this is a uh, choice that I'm making solely on the fact that I feel that I add a lot of value to the, the upcomer guys that, you know, maybe looking for a little bit of direction. I made some mistakes with uh, management and I made some good choices with management. Um, and so therefore, you know, I, I really think I can, I can help the guys coming up instead of being, you know, instead of choosing a manager who may not know exactly what you're going through or the situation, you know, I've been there, I've lived it for the last decade. So that's, that's kind of the route we're going. Wow, I like that. I, you don't hear a lot of fighters. You hear a lot of fighters opening gyms, coaching, but not a lot of them getting into the managerial side of things. And who better than a former UFC fighter who's been doing it, you know, in the UFC for almost a decade, to show you the ropes? That's that's a uh, that that's a fascinating. I wasn't I wasn't expecting to hear you say that. That's a fascinating term. What's the biggest you know lesson that you learned from from managers dealing with managers that you'll you'll try to impart on on you know your your new career here and your new clients? I think uh, the big thing is choosing the right one and yeah. understanding, you know, your goals and how your goals in line with uh, the management and how they're going to get you to those goals. Uh, one big thing that I think that a lot of fighters neglect is I, I, not, I don't only want to take care of, <clears throat> take of take care of guys and give them some guidance through their career, but also give them some guidance during their career on how we're going to get out of this, how we're going to exit, how we're going to uh, be successful long term, not just you know, this short period of time where we're fighters, you know, because even if you have a very long career, let's say 15 years, you know, and you start when you're in your 20s, you're only 35, you know, when you're done and you have so much of your life ahead of you. And if you don't kind of start setting things up ahead of time, you're going to be put in a position where you're not sure what to do, you know. And I was really lucky because uh, you know, I'm sure you're aware of uh, Jay Haran. Jay Haran sat me down a long time ago and talk to me about the importance of building things while you're still active in fighting. And, uh, you know, that kind of spawned the opening of my new gym, of my gym. Um, and so little things like that, like conversations and helping point guys in the correct directions at the right time in their career, I think is a huge value that I could add to any person. I wish you the best, Evan. Congratulations on a great career, a great run in the UFC. Good luck with the gym. Good luck uh, being a manager to these fighters, a mentor to these fighters. That's that's a fascinating next step for you. I wish you all the best in the future with all those endeavors. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. We'll talk to you soon. There he is, Evan Dunham, stopping by. Recently retired from the UFC uh, with an 18-8-1 and record. Like I said, got into the UFC uh, way back when. 
2009 to be exact, February of 2009, uh, beat Per Uckland at UFC 95. Uh, then beat Marcus Aurelio, then Efren Escudero, then Tyson Griffin. Then he met a guy by the name of Sean Shirk, lost his first professional fight 11-1, and one, and has some big wins in his career over the likes of Joe Lozon, and Ross Pearson, Rodrigo Dam, Rick Glenn, Gleison Tebow, Nick Lentz, Tyson Griffin um, early on, Shamar Bailey. I mean, he has fought a lot of top guys, including Sean Shirk and Melvin Gillard, Rafael Dos Santos, and Donald Cerrone, Edson Barbosa. Now getting into the managerial side of things, also with his gym. Uh, that is a very interesting next step for the veteran Evan Dunham.